So this is going to be a track rundown of another generative song I've done on this great great machine here, that's the Deluge. So um, as you can see there's five tracks. Uh, all of those tracks have some kind of randomization going on, either note variation, rhythm variation or variation in sound, usually via LFO or some other modulators you can find um, printed on those buttons here. So um, yeah, let's get into it. It's actually quite quite a nice, nice little one I did here. Um, so that's the first track, that's the bass uh, line. Actually, you know what, let me mute those real quick so we only hear the bass. Uh, and here you can see it's actually four notes that are uh, being randomly triggered, right? So let's listen to it. Yeah, just a very, very deep kind of droney bass. Um, in this case, for this note variation, you can see it's four notes, right? So one really cool thing about the deluge is that you can assign probability, right? Chance to these notes. I think Electron was probably one of the first companies that put that into their groove boxes. But don't quote me on that. I have no idea, right? I'm, I'm just, a, you know, I'm, I just enjoy using it. So um, if you hold a note like this and you, you twist this button, you can see actually the probability. So it's 25%. And what I've done here, um, I've assigned 25% to all of those notes here, right? So if I hold and press, you can briefly see this 25 thing here, right? So what this actually does is that if all of those notes here, right? So those four notes on the same row, if they have 25%, right? If my math is correct, which I mean, I hope it is, right? Uh, it's it's 100% added up, right? So 25, 25, 25, 25 is 100 percent. And if that's the case, if one column here adds up to 100, the deluge will always cycle between one of the nodes, right? So it will not just maybe play two of them or three, you know, depending on the percentage, it will only play one of them, which is a really, really cool feature, right? So that's why if I just press this, it's always just one node being triggered, right? So really cool functionality to make uh, kind of a very yeah a baseline that is, is varies in sound right um but also maybe just as food for thought for you uh this can be taken further as well to just think about it if you have a melody right for example um this will sound awful now because it's very deep but let's imagine you have like a melody like this right here 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 and here for example right Let's imagine that's a beautiful sound, not just some cranky, too deep bass line. So let's say you want to make a variation of this. So maybe you add a higher note up here. So if you add probability to those two, 50% each, when the melody gets through or is played, right, you will have variation on always on those two, right? And you can do even more. You can do three, four, whatever, you know, how, how deep your math goes. So you can add up to 100% on one of those lines. And, and that's why it's a very easy way to create variation within a melody, right? It doesn't have to be a generative song. Yeah, so just a little idea. Um, what else is going on here? Yeah, you can tell it's a droney kind of sound. It's actually based on this preset here, 140. Um, and I've added a few more things. As I usually do, I take presets and then kind of go from there. I've added some uh, modulation via the LFO. So on the deluge, if you, if you hit shift and one of those kind of printed um, yeah, effects or whatever is printed on here basically. So shift, and in this case, um, I think it was resonance. Yeah, frequency, no, frequency, right? If I hit this, frequency starts blinking, right? And uh, what's also blinking is the LFO here, right? So that means those two are connected. That's also, by the way, how you attach LFOs. So you hold shift, you press frequency, and then you press uh, LFO, and then those two are connected. So if we go to the LFO now, you can see the frequency is affected by the rate of 10, or the amount of 10, and the speed of the LFO um, is down here, so it says LFO. You probably can't read it, right? But if I press here, you can see the speed is five, so very, very slow, right? So very slow LFO that is manipulating the frequency. Now, there's another thing being um, manipulated, and that's the resonance. But the resonance actually is, is um, manipulated by the random modulator here, 
or mod sources it's called here, right? So the mod source is actually, um, you have velocity, right? So how hard the node is being hit. You have aftertouch, you have um, all kinds of things, right? And in this case, it's random. So random works a bit differently to an LFO. It will always assign a random value to to the resonance. So in this case, um, if I can hit shift and random, you can see it's actually 50, the amount is 50. So by the amount of 50, the, um, the, the resonance will change, but only on note hit. So that's when you, that's actually, you can tell um, in the generative song I did, you can sometimes see the resonance being kicked up and then it stays like this, right? So it's kind of cool because then if you play a note, you know, this, it's really hard to tell if the filter is low, if the frequency of the filter is low like this. Ah, but there's one. Sometimes you can hear that on note press the, the, the resonance goes up and then it changes the sound quite dramatically, right? You get all these kind of great distortions um, with the frequency and the resonance interacting, right? So that's the bass line. Let's go into the next track. So this is um, kind of the lead, um, which yeah has this kind of, again, Blade Runner, sci-fi, dystopian sound. So let's listen to it. Okay, it's not really doing much because, again, there's a lot of chance attached to it. Right, so how does that work? So basically, this is a lot of notes that only are triggered... Again, let's stop that. That's kind of annoying. Um, it's, it's only being triggered um, all or nothing. Right? And that's achieved by actually holding the start of the notes and then choosing a um, percentage. Right? So by holding those, if you have a lot of fingers, that obviously helps. So if you hold all of those notes here and you... you um, oh no! I changed it. Ah, whatever. Um, so I have to do it again. So if you hold those and you um, change the probability... Probability, I can't talk. Probability, then either all of those notes will play or none, right? So I actually messed it up now, right? But whatever, right? Um, I could just reload it again. So this is also a nice trick of the deluge. So if you hold notes or in a drum pad, and if you hold several notes and you you adjust the probability, then the probability, then you will um, have an all or nothing chance, right? So 10%, all notes will play or none. Yep, so that's track, track two. So let's have a look at track three. I think that's the, what is that actually? Let's have a listen. I think it's the rhythm section. Yeah. Yep. So you can hear there's actually a kind of bass line and let me zoom in a little bit. So yeah, so that's this. It's a very, very, um, it's a kick with a lot of reverb on it. That's basically it, right? And again, those notes have chance on them, like always. Then, yeah, you can see this actually is a track that is, um, so this little white stuff here on the end here, this is actually the length of the track. So usually those are all the same length, but this track actually it's a little bit shorter, right? But what that does is it actually um, will offset the rhythm or offset the track, the individual note here, and that will create some, some variety in rhythm, right? So let's have a listen to this. So this is a hi-hat, hat C, hat closed, I, I suppose. But you can tell it doesn't really sound like your regular hi-hat. And that's because I have attached some modulation to it. No surprise there, right? So I think what I did was I attached it to the frequency. Yeah, so LF, LFO2 is attached to the frequency. And I think I attached something to transpose. Yeah, so transpose this is done here. And it's also being affected by the LFO, right? And um, that that basically is the sh the, 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 the sh the pitch of it shifting and the frequency. So every time it's being triggered, it sounds a bit different, right? Very simple. This guy, what's that? 
kind of high hat. And I think it also has a transpose. Yep. So it's also being uh, affected by the LFO the transpose. So it always sounded a bit different. Also some some delays on it. Right. Then um, yeah, this one up here. This is actually quite an interesting one. This is actually a one. By the way, this is also a preset. I think the whole thing is built from presets, right? So that's how great the deluge is, right? It's it has a lot of presets that are very very usable compared to other machines where basically the whole presets are mostly garbage. But this one, yeah, brilliant presets. Um, well done, deluge people. Um, yeah, so this one is a sample that's actually probably the use for it is kind of like um, yeah an. Uh, something you would use at the start or the end of a track or maybe as a uh, transition to something so let's have a listen yeah so kind of a filtery pumpy kind of thing right whatever um it's called right and that also is frequently um being yeah hit by some kind of yeah, 10% chance it's being uh, fired, right? So that kind of, I, I put that in as, as more of a, yeah, to create some tension. And if you're lucky and the chance is on your side, you will actually have some nice release uh, in that, right? So, yeah, I think that's that's actually it. That's 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 all there is in this track. Um, so, yeah, and by the way, this, this, this the track length here, you can change by, uh, this one I didn't use. Um, so you can actually hold a note and then you, you, um, you you take this and you can just change the length of a track of an individual track right so a very very handy feature um to create some interesting rhythm um oh yeah i forgot i could have just hit undo before in that melody because the deluge unlike other machines has an undo button what an amazing world we live in right um yeah so in the next track i think that's the yeah that's a very colorful one so there's loads of notes attached to it and that is the um, kind of arpeggiated synth here let's listen to that so here we can actually only hear one note so those have I, I don't remember how I attached that probability will I say it correct in this video one more time probability i hope i will probability right so they all have a varying degree of probability attached to them some are combined some are you know on their own right and now you can actually hear it fading away that's because i've attached i think even to the level uh, of the track i think only i know you know what it's, i think it's only the res the frequency because the frequency goes very very deep down and then it just fades away, right? It's out, outside of the hearing spectrum, right? So basically, this is a way of making a track, um, you know, basically cut it out, right? So you don't have to actually cut out the volume. You can only cut out uh, the track with the frequency. So now it's coming back. And sometimes when you're lucky, one of those many, many notes will actually create a chord, right? There you go. Right? And again, this is all very, very slow. So if you listen to it individually, it sounds super boring, right? But in the mix, with very, very slow changing things, you end up with something sounding, well, the way it sounded in the video, right? Right, so, not that track. So actually, probably you're wondering, what the hell, this is really, really easy, simple stuff. There's not much going on. Yep, that's the thing, right? So I, I usually start out those tracks with a lot of randomness, with a lot of notes, and then I end up cutting a lot of them out, right? For example, here I actually muted some of those here, uh, indicated by the yellow lights, right? Because somehow those just didn't really fit into the vibe, right? Or maybe they clashed with maybe a one of the bass uh, notes, right? And if you remember, the, the, bass, the bass here is also just... Actually, it's just one chord, right? Two octaves here and then a, a minor chord. And it's cycling between those, right? So this is really, really simple stuff, basically. Yep, so the last one, that's one is more for flavor. Um, and you would probably not hear it because it has a very, very low percentage, I think 5%. Uh, and all of those are attached again to one probability, right? So either all of those notes will play or none, 
right? And what this is is a synth. I can actually play it. Yeah, kind of again this dystopian vibe and this this up and down. You can hear is actually the frequency that is attached again to an LFO, right? That creates this almost pitch shifty sound. I think that's due to the resonance being pretty high up. Yeah, again based on a preset, so I don't really know what this synth is made up. Maybe it's an FM synth in the end and it's actually some kind of FM magic going on that is manipulating the frequency. But I think it's just the resonance. Let's check. Let's turn down the resonance and then we can... Yeah, there you go. So, without resonance you don't have this pitch shifty sound with resonance. You actually hear the resonance being very uh, harmonic, right? Actually, you can just turn it up more and then you have... Yeah, very, very interesting sounds being created. And that's the whole trick. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, no black magic again, right? I, I wish that there was something much more clever going on, but in the end it's it's five tracks. And with the right amount of experimentation, with the right amount of changing notes and doing things, um, you will end up with something that hopefully sounds okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit tired. I have a newborn at home that is crying a lot. <gasps> yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, what do all of these cool YouTubers say? Leave a like and subscribe or whatever, right? Or don't. Right. That's it. One World Rogue. Enjoy. See ya.